Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck and this one's going to be a black-white clerics deck featuring a lot of the new cards from Zendikar Rising. Now I should preface this by saying that this deck is built for best of one. That's why we're going to see a few creatures that are arena exclusives that are only legal in best of one, like the Hallowed Priest and Soulmender, which rotated out of standard a while ago. So this is only meant for best of one. If you're playing this in best of three, some of these cards won't be legal. So spare me the comments in the comment section. Now I've tried a few different versions of the Cleric deck, including versions playing Taborax Hope's Demise and Aura Skyclave Hierophant, which did have their moments, but overall I wasn't super impressed by them, and instead I'm playing a version with Lures of the Dream Den as her companion, which lets us replay some of our cheaper creatures from the graveyard, which is especially synergistic with our Archfiend's Vessel, which when we play it out of the graveyard turns into a 5-5 Flying Demon, and is also a Cleric with Lifelink, so it's got plenty of synergy even before before we return it from the graveyard. So of course one of the centerpieces of the deck is a Cleric of Life's Bond 2 mana for a 2-2 Vampire Cleric, and whenever another Cleric enters a battlefield under our control, we gain one life, and whenever we gain life, for the first time each turn, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on Cleric of Life's Bond. So it's kind of like you merged a Janice Pride Mate with Soul Mender, and you get Cleric of Life's Bond, so it's an incredibly powerful card. Now it only picks up one counter per turn, so it can pick up multiple counters in the same turn from various instances of life gain, but we can potentially also enable it in the opponent's turn if we've got a soul mender that we can activate. So that's a small interaction to keep in mind. So let's take a look at the entire deck list. At one mana we've got two copies of soul mender. This is one of those arena exclusives that is only legal in best of one. It's a 1-1 cleric and we can tap it to gain one life. And we've got plenty of life gain synergies that reward us for incrementally gaining life. So even though one life might not be a lot, it might represent a ton of advantage over time. Then we also have the full playset of Speaker of the Heavens, another 1 mana cleric with Vigilance and Lifelink, and we can tap Speaker of the Heavens to make a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying, but we can only activate this if we're at 27 or more life and only at sorcery speed, so this is another incentive to gain as much life as possible. And then we've got our 4 copies of Archfiend's Vessel, the 1-1 Lifelink and Cleric that when it returns from the graveyard turns into a 5-5 demon. And then we've got some interaction with the Blood Chief's Thirst, a 1 mana sorcery speed removal spell destroying a creature with converted mana cost 2 or less, but we can also kick it for 2 and a black, and now for 4 mana total we get to destroy any target creature or planeswalker, so just a nice versatile removal spell. And then we also have the full play set of Village Rites as a 1 mana instant, as an additional cost to cast Village Rites we need to sacrifice a creature and then we get to draw 2, we do have a small sacrifice and graveyard recursion theme in the deck, especially with Lures of the Dream Den as our companion. So having some nice cheap card draw with village rights is pretty nice, especially when a card like Archfiend's Vessel is a card we actively want to put in our graveyard to begin with. And then at 2 mana, besides our full playset of Cleric of Life's Bond, we also have 2 copies of Null Priest of Oblivion, a 2 mana 2-1 two Vampire Cleric with Menace and Lifelink, and it also has Kicker for 3 and a black, and when the Null Priest is kicked, we get to return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, and we can even play Null Priest out of the graveyard with Kicker if we're bringing it back with Lures of the Dream Den, so that's another neat interaction. Then we also have the full playset of Skyclave Cleric, 2 mana for a 1-3 Core Cleric that when it enters the battlefield gains 2 life, but we can also play it tapped as a Skyclave Basilica, so it also doubles up as a land. So that's why we only have 18 actual lands, that's because we have a bunch of these dual-faced cards that can also be played as lands, so the versatility is what makes these cards so good. And then we also have the full playset of Luminarch Aspirant, 2 mana for a 1-1 Human Cleric, and at the beginning of combat on our turn we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control, so this pairs quite nicely with some of our lifelinking creatures, especially Null Priest, which has lifelink and menace, so it's very difficult to block, and just a very powerful creature by itself. And then we also have the full playset of Hallowed Priest, this is another one of those arena exclusives that's only legal in best of one, 2 mana for a 1-1 one, one human cleric, and whenever we gain life we can put a plus one plus one counter on Hallowed Priest. So it's essentially a Janice Pride Maid, but it starts out as a 1-1, and it also has a relevant creature type being a cleric. 
And then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Call of the Death Dweller, a sorcery that returns up to 2 target creature cards with total converted mana cost 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, and we can put a death touch counter on either one of them, and a menace counter on either one of them as well. So this can bring back one of our 2 drops and one of our 1 drops at the same time, and of course Archfiend's Vessel is one of the more powerful 1 drops we can get back, as it will also turn into a 5-5 demon. And then looking at some of our dual-faced cards, we also have two copies of Agadim's Awakening, a mythic rare sorcery for X and triple black, and then we can return from our graveyard to the battlefield any number of target creature cards that each have a different converted mana cost X or less. So we can play this for X equals 2 and bring back a 1-drop and a 2-drop, so it's essentially a 5-mana version of Call of the Death Dweller without the Death Touch and Menace counters, but we can also play it as a land untapped at the cost of 3 life, otherwise Agadim the Undercrypt comes into play tapped. So once again the versatility is what makes this card so powerful. Then we've got two copies of Hagra Mauling, a 4-mana instant that costs 1 less to cast if an opponent controls no basic lands, and then we get to destroy target creature, and we can also play it tapped as Hagra Brute Pit. This is probably a card we're gonna play as a spell more often than not, but once again having the option to play it as a land is still nice. And then we've got our four copies of Skyclave Cleric, and then we've got four copies of a Bright Climb Pathway, which we can also play as a Grim Climb Pathway, a nice dual land, and then seven basic swamps and seven basic planes. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. We've got an interesting decision whether to play Solmander or Speaker of the Heavens on turn one. Given that we're on the draw and the Speaker isn't super likely to connect with the opponent, I think I prefer playing Solmander here. And that also has the advantage of being able to grow Cleric of Life's Bond during the opponent's turn, so it still picks up potentially two plus one plus one counters per turn cycle. Opponent on blue red. Now, if we expect a 2 damage removal spell, of course, we want to make sure to use Solmander first. And this turn, we wouldn't be gaining 1 life in our turn, so definitely want to make sure to gain the 1 life now. And then next turn, we can maybe Thirst plus play Priest. Sadly, don't have double white, so we can double spell both creatures. Opponent with an Improbable Alliance into Crash Through, making a first Fairy Token. Using Thirst on a token might be a bit excessive, but I've got another Thirst in hand, and I do want to get this uh, party started. And for now we'll play Hallowed Priests. And we'll send for four, and then I'll use Soulmender in the opponent's turn, so we can still grow with the Cleric. Now, of course, if they have a 2 damage burn spell, they could kill Hallowed Priest in response. So there's definitely a drawback to waiting. Another alliance, that's fine. And a Sprite Dragon. I guess they missed out on a plus one plus one counter on the Sprite Dragon here. Opponent attacks, and now we get to play Speaker. Probably just gonna put Lures in my hands and hit for 10. And once again, use Solmander in the opponent's turn. So we're not out of the woods yet. Opponent can start making plenty of flying chum blockers which can jump in front of my bigger creatures here. Hazard kills Speaker, that works. And a Stormwing Entity, which we can maybe kill with Thirsts. So I'm pretty happy that they weren't able to make any tokens as now they have to chum block with their actual creatures. So, play this kicked. And our opponent's actually just dead on board, as we can grow the Hallowed Priest in our turn. GG's. 
so the missed counter on the Sprite Dragon did not end up making a difference. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with the fine opening hands. Facing a turn one Alsaid. Probably play the Soulmender first, as I don't expect Speaker of the Heavens to be able to deal damage reliably. Daxos, or point on the Mono White Life Gain deck, perhaps. And then we'll play Cleric first. And I can wait until the opponent's turn to activate Soulmender and put a counter on it. Turn 3, boss 3, alright. We are each a grain of sand in the same desert. Put Scounter on the Alsaid. Now is the time to strike. Can block and activate Soulmender. Alsaid is indestructible, so opponent just gain 2 life. Alright, so. Can play Speaker and Hallowed Priests. Play Hallowed Priest first. And pass a turn. Solmander grows Cleric up to a 5-5, five five, Priest up to a 4-4. Four four. And we're slowly getting to 27 life for Speaker of the Heavens. Now we don't have a great way to pressure Basri here, since they have a pretty beefy Duxos. So we might have to fight through a Basri ultimate, which is going to be tough. Although there we go, bailed out by... Blood Chief's Thirst. Probably just want to kill the Planeswalker here. Could also kill Daxos and then try and attack Basri. I guess it's reasonable since we have Cleric and Priest as creatures that can attack unharmed. Although that does make it a bit more difficult to stay at a high life total as my opponent gets to attack me back. So I think just killing Basri and then working towards 27 life is probably better than just attacking Basri here. The downside is that my opponent gets to keep Duxos, but they could have another one in hand for all we know. Well, my opponent having their own speaker makes that plan a little bit worse, since now they also get to make 4-4 tokens. So, we've got an interesting staring contest. Hallowed Priest gains one life, so we can make an Angel right away here. Does mean I lose out on a counter on the Cleric of Life's Bond. Since we're not activating Soulmander in the opponent's turn. But getting to make a token is probably worth it here. And then we can probably attack. Opponent can jump with Alsaid and give Speaker protection. And gains one more life from Daxos. And then I think I'm just playing this tapped since we have Call of the Death Dweller in hand anyway. And my creatures don't seem to be dying. Ooh, Angel of Destiny. Alright. Well, next turn I'm just dead if the Angel attacks. 
if my opponent stays at a healthy life total, so... I need to top deck another removal spell, pretty much. That's not it. So these can attack. Opponent can just trump with Orator and Cleric. And then next turn I'm uh, pretty dead. Although I guess I can just double block the Angel of Destiny with two Angel tokens to make sure it dies if it attacks. So I guess we're still okay here. And then that works. Because yeah, the Angel needs to attack in order to have the alternate win condition work. It's nothing to get back. And we'll pass. But yeah, my opponent also gets to hide behind an army of angel tokens, but they concede. Alright, I think this game was actually far from over, but... Yeah, we could double block Angel of Destiny to prevent your opponent winning the game. And we did have the superior board here with Hallowed Priest and Cleric being able to attack past the opponent's creatures, so we were eventually going to get our life total low enough where Speaker wouldn't be able to keep making angels, so we were probably advantaged, but maybe still an early concession. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. Turn one Vessel, double Aspirin to put counters on it. Turn one Merfolk, Wind Robber. So opponent probably on a blue-black rogues deck. So the opponent filling my graveyard is definitely helpful with Lurus as well. Heartless Act kills Aspirant. Heartless Act is actually kind of awkward against our deck since we have so many plus one plus one counters, so our creatures can often survive it. For now, we probably want to play Aspirant. And then... Yeah, I think I still put counters on the Vessel here. If they have another Heartless Act, we can Village Rites, sacrificing Aspirant in response, so it's not too bad. Another Vessel. Now I'll probably put Counter on the Aspirants. No Heartless Act in response. It's gonna be the Thought Thief which is gonna jump in front of my Aspirant here. That's okay. I would like to keep up Village Rites. Although I probably just tap out here and put lures in hands. Second thief, so they can mill me for quite a bit. So, 8 cards in Graveyard means both Thieves are pumping the team. Although Lurs can return a creature from the Graveyard here. To uh, shrink down the creatures again. So I think that's the play. Might be the Wind Robber that's holding priority, since they can sacrifice it to draw a card. And then either Hallowed Priest or Aspirant. I guess Aspirant's slightly better here. And then... 
put one counter on the aspirants. Maybe one more on the vessel, and then next turn I can sack vessel and maybe bring it back with lures. Opponent takes seven. And if my opponent has Zareth San, we don't have any super expensive, powerful cards they can get back from my graveyard. Since uh, they're limited to one and two mana. And yep, there's the Trickster. So what do they get back? Like a Skyclave Cleric, I guess? Hallowed Priest? Sure. And a Thieves Guild Enforcer. That one's pretty good as a big Death Touch creature. And then put one counter here. One here. And maybe a second one on the small vessel, assuming they trade for the larger one. Or I can incentivize them even more by putting a counter on the 4-4 vessel. Because I actively want to get back Archfiend's vessel here. Although is my opponent just dead on board, actually. They have two blockers. Block, block. Yeah, they're just dead, actually. I was prepared to play a long game with village rights and Archfiend's vessels coming back from the graveyard. But I guess we'll just win. Alright, so the deck definitely has some legs and being able to get value from the graveyard against some of these mill decks like Blue Black Rogues and the Rune Crab decks is a nice bonus. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, this ends fine. No one drops, so a bit of a slower start, but still uh, keepable for sure. And then I'll hold on to the Hagra Mauling for the time being. Next turn we can go Hallowed Priest into Archfiend's Vessel. Opponent's mono blue so far. It's gonna start milling me with a secret keeper. Alright, that potentially helps Lurus get stuff back from the graveyard too. Opponent on blue-green and a Teferi's Tutelage. So they are actively trying to mill us. Don't think I need to use Mauling on the Secret Keeper here. Maybe save it for a Ruined Crab, which I'm sure my opponent is also playing. Well, Thirst I guess we can play as it's pretty efficient. Kill Secret Keeper. And then probably put the counter on Archfiend's Vessel. Alright, so we are presenting Lethal. Our deck can add a ton of power and toughness to the board relatively quickly. There's a Ruin Crab. Still have 39 cards in Library. So that puts the opponents to 13, but we can kill the Ruin Crab. Attack with all. And that's exactly 13 damage. Sweet, managed to beat Blue-Green Mill onto the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. 
even have the Call of the Death Dweller to get back Archfiend's Vessel if it dies. Although, don't know if an Omori the Collector deck is gonna have a ton of removal. This is probably a blue-green mutate deck, if I had to guess. Although Village Rites is a way for us to put Vessel in the graveyard without the opponent's help. Turn to Lotus Cobra. Can't kill that one quite yet. And then end of turn, probably village rights on the vessel. Great Horn mutated it onto the Cobra, which is gonna generate one more mana with landfall here in just a second. But they don't have anything to spend that man on. Alright, so I can play a speaker, which will grow both creatures. Attack. And I'm not opposed to just call to make one five five here. I guess I could have done that pre-combat to uh, get in one more damage. Point is at five, so every one of my five powered creatures is lethal. Although the Shore Shark is a nice one as it can bounce my token. Although they still need an additional blocker here. They didn't have a 2-mana play last turn. And yeah, our opponent concedes, despite a pretty good start. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Double Vessel to synergize with Village Rites. Facing turn 1 Wind Robber. So another rogue's deck. So probably won't be able to attack with Archfiend's Vessel if they keep up two mana. Alright, they're gonna thirst the Vessel instead. Play Cleric. Next turn we can double spell. Call of the Death Dweller would have been a nice draw. Kills Cleric as well. So Aspirants into Vessel. Could also keep up village rights here if we expect another removal spell. But I also want to get on the board. And then I'll put counter on the vessel to kind of spread out our wealth a little bit. And eventually we'll be able to play Lurus and hopefully get some creatures back. Opponent does keep up two mana, could be a counter spell or a flash creature. So let's see what's up here. So if they have the one three flash, I maybe want to put counter on vessel only attack with vessel, or I could put counter on aspirant attack with both. But putting it on vessel makes a little bit more sense. 
and just attack with Vessel. And we'll put Lurus in hand. And Drown kills Vessel, so... Could have also been used as a counter spell there. So I definitely don't want Lurus getting countered if I can avoid it. So for now... I guess we'll move to Combots. Put counter on speaker. Seven cards in graveyard, so a thought thief is still only a 1 3. Send in speaker. And then. Yeah, potentially missed out on a counter on cleric, but if they did do something, I could have gone Lurus in to get something back. I guess we'll just play the cleric anyway here. And pass a turn, keep up village rights if they try and kill something. And brazen Borrower to bounce, alright. I could fizzle the Brazen Borrower by sacrificing, but I don't think I want to do that. So your opponent is stuck on two lands, but they have plenty of cheap interaction. And they kind of have to keep up counterspell mana for Lurus, otherwise we can just get a ton of value out of the graveyard, including double Archfiend's Vessel. So our opponent's in kind of a tough spot. Still gonna keep Aspirin back just to play it safe. That's fine. So they could still have Drown for Lurs here. Trade happens. Pass a turn. Sure. Scavenger, so opponent finally taps out, so we get to go Lurus into Archfiend's Vessel. And then I would like to keep up Village Rights as well. And then I expect Lurus to eat removal here. But we've got a nice board presence in the meantime. There's a drown that they were keeping up the turns before. And now that we drew some extra cards, our mana advantage is going to become a bigger factor as well. So I can go Cleric into Hallowed Priests. Hit for three, keep the demon back to block scavenger. And keep up village rights. And then next turn we can maybe play this kicked. Ooh, that's a nice one too. Can already play that for x equals 2, or I can wait to do it for x equals 3 to even get back Lurus. That's gonna be pretty epic. And then for now... Move to combats. Put counter here. Keep the demon back, I think. Zareth has a 4-4, fair enough. So 
until we get to village rights. And we'll just kill the scavenger. And then next turn, Agadim's Awakening for three. If our opponent doesn't concede before then. Ah, oh, sadly don't get to see the Awakening here. But yeah, Awakening for three is kind of the dream. If you can get back Alurus from the graveyard as well. And then we could have gotten back Archfiend's Vassal, maybe Cleric of Life's Bond. So yeah, not bad, not bad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, we've got a Keeper. Vessel into Aspirant, or Vessel into Null Priest into Aspirant is a fine start. If Vessel dies, we can bring it back as a Demon. Opponent also with turn 1 Vessel. Vessel number two. Definitely playing this as a lance and then... I think I prefer playing another Aspirants. Could see village rights after blocks. No village rights. Maybe they still have Call of the Death Dweller and they just wanted to get this in the graveyard. They want to wait to get double Archfiend's Vessel back. That's kind of my read on the situation. So, what are we doing? If they make two 5-5 demons, that might be a little hard to beat. So I think... I might not attack this turn, strangely enough. And just go Speaker plus Null Priests. Although they might just have a Village Rites now, since they did have a pause with 3 mana. Suppose it could just be a removal spell. Yeah, not sure what to do here. I guess I'll still attack. Any Flash creatures I should be worried about? I guess there's like the 3-1 Flash they could have. Put one counter there, one counter there. Alright, they must have drawn the village rights this previous turn, since they didn't use it the turn before. So now we might see Call of the Death Dweller making two 5-5s, five but uh, we're pretty close to making some 4-4s four ourselves. So I think we're still in fine shape. Cleric a decent draw too. So I want to turn this into a 6-6. Six, six. Angels versus demons. Pretty thematic. Brings me back to simpler times. Alurus brings back the third vessel, so triple demon. Hits me for 10. That can kill one of the demon tokens. Uh, 
And yeah, this game seems pretty over. Attack with everyone but speaker. And we can make another angel. Alright, GG's. So yeah, opponent doing a similar thing to our deck and managed to make some demons before we could, but yeah, the life gain synergies are just too powerful. So I've definitely been impressed by the deck's performance today. I started out with kind of the more traditional approach to a cleric deck with a few 3 and 4 mana cards, but after playing a few games with the deck I figured that the most powerful cards in the deck were actually the 2 drops. So then just cutting some of the more expensive stuff in the deck, adding lures, made the deck even better since we get more reliable access to Archfiend's Vessel out of the graveyard and we can keep getting back those powerful 2 drops and just lowering the curve and having a more efficient game plan is always a good idea. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.